Hello and welcome to the CCL week two of the last chance qualifier. And this is it. It's winner go home time. Yep. Mick, how are you doing today? I'm feeling ecstatic, man. I told you even then, Bernard, in the pre-show before we even got here into the cast, that last chance qualifiers is literally my favorite time of the season, even more so than playoffs, because every single situation, no matter what you find yourself in, the pressure's on, it's win or go home, no matter what it may be, it doesn't matter, records, everything is out the window. You better get yourself a dub tonight, or you're going to see yourself coming back next year if you graduate, and sadly enough, that's not going to be the case here. Precisely, and tonight we've got a straight up win and get into the playoffs, lose and go home. And I mean, hey, better luck next year. Simple as that. I mean, I don't really know how else to put it. I mean, let's go ahead and look into the head to head of what we've got in our first matchup of the night. We've got the New Haven Chargers going up against the University of Waterloo. And when I say, I mean, both of these teams understand what's at stake here and now. I mean, it's win or go home. Your records at the end of the day, they're not really going to matter because. I mean, it all comes down to this. You're both yeah. in the same position. This is where we see some crazy wild cards come in as well. I mean, all these numbers, sure, we have them on the board. I mean, records looking at 9 and 10, 9 and 11, pretty relatively close for each side. But I got to say, Waterloo, I'm a little concerned about their hard point. Their search and yeah. destroy is looking pretty sufficient there. But as, I mean, we have an even record, at least in both of those. And control still just being one of these weaker modes, I want to say, for every single team that's going through the last chance qualifiers. The teams that are already in playoffs, already guaranteed those spots, they're going to be the ones that have the really good control. These other guys can be the ones that they were bullying in the meantime. So we're not going to see the best stats in the world, but even then more so, as you mentioned earlier, it was just comes down to win or go home. So, I mean, these are what we see, these crazy wild cards where teams are saying, all right, well, did we wake up today? Are we ready to play today? Because that's all it really comes down to. Precisely. And with the New Haven Chargers, clearly better in hard point. And then if you look at the University of Waterloo, they're clearly the better team in control overall. I mean, it's really going to come down to those searches and to those, those yep. tiebreak situations. So let's go ahead and take a look at the home roster for tonight. Oh, man, because, I mean, listen, this might be the last time that we introduce them. Let's go ahead and give them a good one. It's going to be Zen, Shadow, BPR, and Arelu. Oh, excuse me. And Carnage actually going to be coming through as the fourth player for the New Haven Chargers tonight. And, I mean, this roster, as we stated, I mean, they've got high hopes. They don't want their season to end right here. Yeah, they most definitely don't. I mean, considering this squad, I think I've cast them over two times in the course of the season thus far, and they look really good. I like what New Haven Chargers have to provide here. I like the way they play the game, and even then, it's not the most crazy thing that we've seen or really witnessed here in the CCL, but it's good enough to get them to the stage they found themselves. I mean, it all comes down to whether or not these teams can really show that they have a little bit of that oomph, a little bit of an extra element to themselves show of why they can move on to the next round. But once they get to that playoff situation, facing these Titans that we've seen through the entirety of the CC all the way from day one, from week one, that's when they're going to have to break out the big guns. But not enough about the old New Haven Chargers. We get the other side. We got Waterloo to bring to the table as well. We're going to see the away team, what they have to provide, because they got a roster too, man. They got to be here to show up. They got to play as well. They got to make sure this game is a good one for us. And that's going to be Maz, Jovo, Burke, and Fico, who are in the lineup for these teams. And I mean, looking at Waterloo, I haven't seen as much out of them, but I've I've definitely heard a couple things here and there, so I'm excited to see what they have to provide. Exactly. I mean, listen, if you're going to be impressing us, now is definitely going to be the time. It's when your season's on the line, when things matter the most. Let's go ahead and take a look at the maps that we are going to be looking at for this series. As I mean, listen, I just got word. These players are already ready. They are itching yeah. to get into these games. So let's go ahead and fly through this real quick so that we can hop into the action. We're getting two wow. maps. That's it. We got Berlin and Tuscan. <laughs> I mean, listen, this is going to be spicy. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, even then, I'll, I'm going to call this one of these sandwich matchups because Berlin, sure, it's going to go ahead and be an introduction and an end. And if we get around to it, it's got to be, it's almost the bun of our lineup. I mean, sometimes yeah. you have some great <laughs> buns from places if you can get yourself a nice little burger. But, I mean, what it comes down to, the subject of what we got going on is going to be the beef. And honestly, that's going to be Tuscan, as you can tell just from our lineup of the maps. I mean, Tuscan, we're running it back three times in a row. Search and destroy, control, and hardpoint. Every single mode you can get in a matchup, we're going to see at least on that map if it does go to that fourth map. So, I mean, looking at it, whoever wins this Tuscan, they better start feeling themselves at home on it. Go ahead and kick out the lawn chairs, but also still be pretty attentive to what's going on because they're going to be there for a pretty long while. Oh, 100%. It's looking like a good bun, looking like a good beef, and I can't really name a better duo right now. I mean, listen, I'm excited for this matchup right here. So, I mean, listen, I'm ready to hop into the action. I'm sure the teams are as well. So the second that they're ready, I mean, listen, we're going to go ahead and send it in. I mean, listen, these players right here, they understand what's at stake right now. And I got to ask you, Mick, you know, being, you know, being the color analyst on the night, how are you feeling, you know, 
about these teams nerve wise what do you think they need to do on this first map to kind of calm themselves because i mean this right here this could be their last time on the sticks I think it really just comes down to who can find themselves more of a steady start. Not playing for aggression, not really trying to burn up all the gas out of the tank right here on the get-go on this map one, knowing that, I mean, Tuscan is going to be a much longer consistency that we're going to see over the course of the series. We're going to see the map a lot more. We're going to see what these players have to do. So, I mean, in a situation like that, whoever can play for these ARs, who can make sure to say, all right, let's go ahead and get these guys warmed up. Let's sit towards the back. Make, make sure to hold these corners and let the SMGs just kind of make themselves at home. That's what it comes down to. But even then, we already see the point being contested and a little bit of time on the lights for Waterloo, but an early couple kills to come out as well for the side of New Haven to make a quick answer. Yeah, I mean, New Haven able to shut them out easily, getting off to that 4-0 and kill start right now. And that's going to be them getting a whole lot of early time. And listen, I mean, right now it's all the New Haven Chargers. And this is the thing. This squad, you know, definitely going to be the better team in a hard point, as we stated. So it's really going to be about Waterloo really putting up a fight here because I think their foothold is really going to have to come down to that map two search and destroy that map three control where they have the better, you know, the better win loss ratio. Yep. And then, you know, take it to that final game five and win the S&Ds. I think they're just going to have to win the S&Ds outright because based off the record, I mean, Hardpoint just isn't their strong suit. Yeah, and it most definitely is, and I think, honestly, they could find themselves a little bit of a bounce back. I mean, New Haven, they've already showed a pretty good bit of dominance here, specifically on this map, knowing that it's now 37-7, to 7, and they're definitely going to fight for this next site, knowing the P2's up for grabs now. But, I mean, looking at the map, looking at Berlin just as a whole, you actually have yourself some of a slower pacing on this map, purely because of how large it is. So you don't have to freak out. You don't have to make sure it's like the uh, game of Tuscan where you're rushing to site on a constant basis, always seeing somebody, even though it is Call of Duty, and you'll see them pretty quickly in comparison to other maps, you actually have a lot of breathing room and a lot of time to set things up. And honestly, Waterloo can make oh the most Oh my of that. God. BPR, six and one on a four spree, pistol whipping anyone walking in the door. Looking like a serious problem right now in the mail room. But finally, Spooky is going to be able to take him out. And that's going to be at a perfect time because, that, I mean, listen, honestly, this New Haven roster, they're, they're starting to get this momentum rolling. And, I mean, you don't want Berlin to get out of hand because if you go down by 100 on the first set of rotations alone, I mean, it's just going to be a problem for you. And we're only heading into the third hill, and you're already down by 40. You most definitely are. And even then, you got to make sure to have a bounce back and a half. Looking at the standing of the team so far, as you said, 40 points down. It looks like that league could even go more so if Waterloo can't frag out in the likes of New Haven Chargers. Knowing they're finding these kills so consistently, they're not only winning the site, they don't even need to win the site. They can hand it over, find these frags, clear the thing out, and say, thanks for setting things up for us. We're going to make ourselves at home now. You've already broken the windows. You've broken the doors. You've literally cleared out the site for us, done all the dirty work, and we're just going to come to clean things up. Yeah, precisely. And now with this push coming in at the 30-second mark, I mean, listen, this University of Waterloo, they need to make this count because you can see player number three in Zen. He's already rotating around toward those train tracks. You know, he went all the way through that long B street. Now, you know, it's just going to be all about this engagement over here at the train tracks. Player three versus player seven. It's going to be coming down to Zen. Is he going to be able to make this big kill right here onto Bork? Yes, able to take him out. And that's going to be control for this New Haven roster. They've got old. They are able to take him out, though, and that might be able to help them break the hill, but it's still going to be a 90-point advantage coming into train tracks, and it's going to be much easier for New Haven to break this because, I mean, already they did have that bit of information. They understand the setup that the squad in Waterloo is going to be wanting to have. Yeah, I mean, already looking at the stance of this team, I mean, New Haven is really running away with this game, and that's a big problem for Waterloo. I mean, I sat there talking about aggression, talking about pacing things out, making sure you don't burn all the gas in the tank. New Haven Chargers, well, they haven't even started up their car. Better yet, they're still already a quarter down mile on the road. I mean, it's just looking so good in how fluent they are in getting these kills that they're really showing Waterloo what they're made of and showing that they had themselves a pretty easy introduction for the night. This being their first map and having all these jitters that we talked about all these players in the last chance qualifiers, They've already got them out of the way. They know that we can then, they have a lead like this. I'm just sitting at 50 points right now. I'm looking to elongate a little more as they do struggle to go ahead and capitalize on this B4, knowing how difficult it is to break once we see Waterloo grab that control. That's the one site that I don't think New Heavy's going to really have to flip around on its head. But I mean, they find themselves the next site and they're going to already be there for it. Precisely. And, uh, you know, one of the interesting updates uh, that I did see that did come through for Call of Duty was, you know, the little mantling thing. You know, all. Yeah. Uh, all characters now make that grunting hopover noise. So uh, do you know if there's going to be any preferred characters coming out with, with that update? Because I know that everyone, you know, they, they were using, you know, I think it was like three particular characters that just didn't make any noise whatsoever when you climbed up. So now with that change, I mean, how do you think that changes things? Because that is something that 
literally was used so much in pro play, you couldn't hear them at all, and now you're going to be able to hear everyone climb. So how much do you think that's really going to affect things? I think it's going to have a much bigger impact when it comes to search and destroy because, I mean, audibles yeah. aren't all that important when it comes to control and hard point. You know players yeah. are going to be shooting you. You're going to be checking all your angles anyways. You're going to make sure to hold down these sites and do your best. And, I mean, every single player, no matter what, they were kind of making these change-ups. They were playing around these characters that didn't make noise anyway. So yep. I don't think it's going to have too much of an impact. I think it's going to make things a lot more fun to see all these skins and how much money the players have spent on the game. But besides that, I don't think there's going to be too much in it. Fair enough, fair enough. I mean, as you stated, definitely not going to be coming into play much here. I mean, unless somebody's, you know, climbing through a window in the mail room on you or something like that. I mean, still, you know, we got to wait and see. But right now, it's going to be all New Haven Chargers. They still find themselves doubling up the points of this Waterloo roster. As we find ourselves now on this second set of rotations, it is going to be Waterloo that are going to be locking down this P1 for now. This is going to be the break coming in as Shadow is able to burst through the doors. It's going to be all up to Bork to keep things level, but no, he's going to get dropped as well. And New Haven, they've got the control, and now they're going to be looking already for those early rotations. Look again, it's Zen heading over to the mailroom. If he can take out Stim, which he does, that's going to be a big rotational kill. And now the New Haven Chargers are going to be set up perfectly for next, and they've already got a 90-point advantage. Yeah, I mean, this is looking really rough. Knowing the New Haven, they found themselves such an accelerant there off the get-go to get themselves to 110, and over the course of these last couple spots, they have only accumulated 60. That's enough for only one site, knowing that Waterloo is really making themselves look much more doable in this matchup. But, I mean, New Haven, they can't fall asleep at any point in time. Knowing that the score is creeping up on them, they have to find a point to bounce back. They have to find some kind of a ground to be held, and we're just not seeing too much of that. The kind of tried and true they were doing earlier, finding themselves uh, light control of the site, making sure the exchange let Waterloo clear that out. We don't see them doing that anymore. They're actually trying to go for it first. They're fighting. They're holding these angles. But this is the last chance qualifiers, man. Every single player knows the hot spots. They know where these guys are probably going to be. They're going to drop down from staircases already having their crosshairs on that point. So you got to stay moving. you got to stay active. you got to get yourself warmed up. Because as we know, if you don't stretch before you start running away, you're going to strengthen up eventually. <laughs> oh, yeah, exactly. Something can definitely go drastically wrong. I mean, listen, I've, I've, I have pulled my own Achilles doing that. Didn't stretch for playing basketball. Snap. You know, it happens. So you got to warm up. You know, got to be ready to go. It's a 100-point advantage right now coming in for New Haven. Only about 45 left to win. Seems like they already got the rotations locked down as well toward this lobby. It's going to be all up to Bork, but Bork's going to be dropping. Oh, man. And Shadow sitting in the corner trying to lock things down. It's finally going to get taken out by Stim. But the trades are coming out still, and it's going to be New Haven locking down this new point, and this might be it. It most definitely could be. I mean, it was looking at the stance thus far. New Haven with the way they're trying to frag out, but just can't really find it. This Carnage does find one, but I mean, knowing that Waterloo, they traded out two. They have themselves a numbers advantage. They have something to work with. They have a breach on the side as well. This could be doable, but it all comes down to just playing the stall game while still capitalizing on that and finding time as well. But this is where we see New Haven step up because yeah. every single time, especially Shadow in this case scenario, more specifically, you got to make sure these plays are going to come out much more consistently. You got to find these frags, knowing that you're going to be going out to search and Destroy. Go on that attacking side. Oh. Get yourself on the side. Holding spots down like that for a post plant. This is all going to translate over later, but right now it has to at least in this first one. Yeah, precisely. And the thing is that we do know that we are going to see another hill at least. New Haven are not going to be able to win it here, but they are still going to be getting this scrap time. Oh, man. You see Player 5 and Bork was debating, do I go fight it or do I just rotate? And he decided to leave those eight seconds. So guess what? I mean, it's only going to be 12 more that they need to get on this hill. And that's a big kill coming in from Shadow right now. I mean, all they've got to do is hold the line for five more seconds. It's only going to be one player in Spooky that's going to be close enough to do something about it. But great positioning by Shadow, understanding I just need to play my life. Oh. And we're going to be able to lock this one down. That's great teamwork. That's great coordination. Great communication. And New Haven Chargers with a dominant game one win in hard point. Not dumb enough to find themselves to put the other side in the 100-point club, but at least enough to find themselves a pretty early game here. Knowing that they can get themselves a pretty good head start looking at their stat line and looking at the frags and looking how they played across the map, especially on Berlin. We didn't see too many long plays. We didn't see the automaton really go ahead and have that spotlight that we were expecting. We saw these SMGs really start to excel. We saw retakes on retakes on retakes. We saw these players looking to play for these close quarters, not setting up too much on the map, but honestly, that they didn't need to. When you saw New Haven, the way they were playing, getting on that site, waiting for Waterloo to take it over, and Waterloo wasn't spreading themselves out, setting up that kind of roadblock system, making sure that you got to go through these tiers. you got to go through this border control, man. Find yourself at the first gate. Go to the next. Go to the next. When you have just an upfront stack onto that site, it makes the job that much easier for the other team to break you. 100%. I mean, both these squads definitely went to war, but the New Haven Chargers definitely seem like they sharpened their swords. They they had their shields a little bit more 
a little bit more polished, a little bit more ready for tonight. I mean, listen, as we stated, last chance qualifier, the winner of this matchup will be moving into the East Group H. And the loser, I mean, listen, they're just going to be having to watch, get their own popcorn, and enjoy the rest of the show. So there's a lot on the line, so momentum is definitely going to be a factor. So heading into this search and destroy that is going to be heading into Tuscan, I mean, the middle of this beef that is the middle of this wonderful sandwich that we have of Tuscan in Berlin. How are you feeling right now? How are you feeling, Mick, if you're, uh, if you're the University of Waterloo heading into this game too? I'm a bit a little concerned, quite honestly, with you, Big Dog. I mean, sure, we sat there and saw the lineups in terms of the score. We knew that New Haven was going to be pretty favorable when it came around to hard point, looking at the record and knowing not only they had more matches made, but also more matches won on top of that. Nearly as many matches won compared to Waterloo just stacked as an entirety overall from what they've seen in the season. So knowing that New Haven had themselves an advantage, they can't really beat themselves up about it. Waterloo know they're going to have to bounce back. They know this game is going to really go out of their control. But over the course of the night, they're going to have to really step things up to Tuscan. They're going to have to have not only somewhat of a good answer, they're going to have to have an amazing answer to really counteract that pressure and that score line we saw on map one. Knowing this can be search and destroy, it's going to be pretty easy to do, knowing the pace of the game kind of slows down a little bit. Problem is, New Haven was very, very on that map one, and their SMGs are the ones that were heating up. That's going to be a problem going into Tuscan because that's where you encourage that kind of play. Yeah, I was just about to say on Tuscan, you know, if you are the aggressor, a lot of times it's going to be paying off. And Tuscan is a map where eventually, honestly, if you want to do any play on offense, you're going to need to make an aggressive play. Yeah. doesn't matter whether you're going to be pushing out A long. doesn't matter whether you're going to be bursting through the doors over at B. doesn't matter whether you're going to be running down mid. You need a bold play in order yeah. to win any round of offense on that map unless the defense is just going to run at you and throw their lives away, which rarely ever happens in a situation where it's the last chance qualifier. So, I mean, Mick, right now, I know that this New Haven Chargers roster, I mean, they've got all the momentum. They're going to be feeling great coming into this one. So, I mean, if you're coming in their shoes right now, what do you want to what do you want to say to them? If you were coach Mick right now in New in the New Haven's ears, what are you saying? Hey, that, that's all it comes down to, boys. You get yourself a good win. You follow things up. You keep that momentum running. Just play the game. Get yourself a first couple rounds on the board, even then find yourself the initial round. And past that point, you could say the game's going to be sealed and done for because you find yourself the advantage. You have that little bit of leeway. You have at least one round or two at that stage to go ahead and get a feeler. See where the setups are going to be. See where their defaults are really standing out on the map, knowing that Tuscan... This is going to be what of a tendency game. We're going to see this map three times in a row. We're going to see where players start to excel in spots on the map. We're going to see where these players like to play the defense. We're going to see where they like to hit on the attacking side. We're going to see where these teams both want to be, regardless of whatever you're on. I mean, I, I, sitting as a coach for New Haven, I still got to have a neutral stance at the end of the day because I have to respect my opponent just as much as I respect my team. And you can't sleep on either side at the end of the day. Yeah, I mean, and that's what I'm saying. If I'm the coach of New Haven, I'm essentially going to be saying, listen, Calm down. It's just one map. Let's relax. Let's act like it's zero on, zero. Still, let's take this thing one game at a time. This is the last chance qualifier. I'm not trying to, you know, you know, get reverse swept oh. or anything like that. Let's just take this one slowly because right here, as we stated, if they can win one of these search and destroys for the New Haven Chargers, yeah. they're going to be good to go, in my opinion, for the yeah. rest of the series. All they've got to do is bank on that that hard point in game four, and they're going to be good to go. So if they can win one of these two ne next two maps, they're going to be fine. So. This is a must-win situation right now for Waterloo, in my opinion. They have to win the next two maps. Let's go ahead and take a look at these maps right here, right now. Yeah, I, I do want to go ahead and note that if you're my coach, man, that would be a huge downer. To know that we're all hyped up and you're like, calm down, calm down. I want that aggression. <laughs> I want that hype. Knowing that my coach is shutting me down, I don't know how I feel about that. But nonetheless, <laughs> knowing that we're going to Tuscan, knowing that was a matchup there for hard point, as you just priorly mentioned that, I mean, their hard point looked outstanding. Regardless of whether or not we see Waterloo grab themselves the next two maps, on, or the next two modes, excuse me, because it's going to be the same map. Uh, and going right back to hard point, we know that New Haven, it's not somewhat of a close game. It's not like we're going to be grinding our teeth right there towards the end. We're going to be screaming ourselves off and, you know, just tearing up our throats for these two teams that talk about what they're doing across the board. I think New Haven will run away with it by that point. And honestly, that's where the pressure comes in for Waterloo. They know they're possibly going to win that hard point. They're going to lose that hard point as well. So I think they're going to have to set themselves up for that, to know they have themselves a cushion and know that the rock is eventually going to hit them. But how much have they reinforced their window? How much have they really invested the money into it to make sure that it's not going to crack by the time time comes? Yeah, now my, my next question to you, because I left you off the hook earlier. I didn't ask you for a score prediction. You know, oh, I usually gosh. get the exact score out of my co-caster. So, you know, oh. so I already let you let you 
I already let you cheat a little bit, man. You're up 1-0 already. You already understand, you know, what how the first map yep. went. So how are you calling this series as a whole? What's going to be the final score line? I think it's going to be 3-1 in the favor of New Haven, quite honestly. Looking how they played hardpoint, knowing that's going to transition over to the likes of control as well when it comes down to just getting yourself a site, not only holding it, but also grabbing it as well. Defense always has that advantage. We always see defense able to pull things out at the end of the day, not only on top of that fragging power, but knowing how well New Haven was able to breach a site, hold it as well towards the end. I mean, entire rotation, seeing on that hard yeah. point, knowing on an aggressive map like Tuscan, where we see the SMGs are going to start Excel, it's going to be a huge problem for them. And I think, honestly, that Waterloo, they have to look out for this specifically. They have to hold this down. And no matter what it may be, I say if Waterloo has a shot right now to grab that first map, it's going to be the easiest right here in Circle Destroy. When you know the game slows down, you have a reset every single round, whether it's win or lose, you have a reset. You have a time to figure out what's going on. You're not constantly trying to figure things out on comms on top of each other, talking on amongst one another, and just really getting these comms clustered. You get that moment of silence. You get that time to really think for a second before you make your next action. And now it's going to be the University of Waterloo looking to make a play over at B. And they're going to be kicking things off, pushing out Zinn in the backside. Let's see exactly if Zinn's going to be able to lock this one down. Looks like there is going to be a couple trades going to be coming out early and often. Zinn's going to drop as well. And it looks like University of Waterloo off to a good start. But VPR is able to even things out. FICO gets the trade. we got a 1v2 situation right now. Shadow's going to need to clutch this one up big time. And I really love the start there from Waterloo, doing what no other team does, hitting the B site right off the get-go. Every single team is almost like they have a gentleman's agreement to say, let's hit A. Let's see what's going to go on there. We know the play is going to come through. And now, knowing that the sniper, they're going to hit their sides. They know that they're going to have a sniper possibly towards that A site every single time. It's going to be Shadow as well. But in the meantime, there's no player oh. watching there towards Staircase. And that could have been an actual clutch coming out of Shadow if he just kept on if being Shadow persistent with the shots. If Shadow realized that he was staring at that second player yep. already, he he 100% would have pistol whipped that player and then ran away and reset and, you know, play, played his life and played the 1v. Oh, man, Shadow, that was unfortunate. I just don't think he was expecting, you know, the other player to be right next to him. That really doesn't happen that often. But, hey, I mean, listen, Waterloo able to get the first offensive round, and that's going to be massive because, I mean, listen, it's been kind of fabled that offense is the favored side on this map. Yeah. I understand that, you know, Search and Destroy, typically, historically in Call of Duty, defensive sided on literally almost every map in Call of Duty history. I think this might this might legitimately be one of the few offensive sided maps ever in Call of Duty history of competitive. I'm not now that I'm thinking about it, I can't really remember any. And I think this is more just kind of a testament to look at how small the map is and how easy it is to move around more specifically inside of Vanguard. With the movement system being so fast, you can find yourself off a post plant, move across the map, and you're not setting up on Sun anymore because you know you have time to get anywhere else and still make those plays. Have that element, have that wild card to be prepared, especially if you had the team to allocate across the map to set up for that. But uh, it's not going to seem like Waterloo have too many teammates to set up for something like that because New Haven Charges are already being in a 4v2 situation, not even getting the bomb down just yet. They're just trying to play it slow and steady, saying, you know what, if we're grabbing these picks, let's just keep on doing that. We don't have to worry about getting on an objective. We don't yeah. have to give them the site. If we know that they're going to be clustered, that they have no idea where to go and still have this split onto the field, we now know it's a one-on-one -on -one side, one on the other. We take these fights, we win them, and it's a 1v4 now. Yeah, now it's going to be uh, no stims the Ooh, not Stim Zero up top, but, I mean, in a 1v4 situation, you got to defuse this bomb. You got 30 seconds. I mean, you're not going to be winning this round. It's going to be tied up 1-1. One to one. Uh Oh. He's able to pick off one in the mid right there. But, I mean, the way these players are so spread out, I mean, it's it's okay. just not going to happen. And, yeah, 1-1 one one situation now. I mean, the offensive team wins both of these early rounds. Now, okay, I was thinking, I don't want to go in on this tangent too much, but... I never thought about it like that. I, I've been in, I've been playing competitive <laughs> Call of Duty since Call of Duty Four. I don't think there has ever been a map where the defensive side or the offensive side was the favorite side in all of Call of Duty history for Surge. I, Dude, I'm telling can, you, can it's you the think plans. Of one? I can't. I think it literally just comes down to the plants. I mean, team, uh, we could have an entire speedrunning community based on Call of Duty players to say, how fast can we get a plant down on a site? Because yeah. teams find that within like three seconds, right? It's almost immediate. So it's just crazy to see what they can do and what they can accomplish, especially, as I mentioned, the post plant situation. You have such easy transitions at every single point in the map and knowing how connected oh. everything is right there, like DPR connected two kills back to back to find themselves now in a 4v2 situation on the defense. Is looking really good for them to know they can get the second onto the board. Yeah, it's looking like the New Haven defense is definitely going to be stepping up for sure. As you stated, off the backs of BPR, picking up those early two. But FICO is going to be able to answer back. Oh, and that's going to be huge coming in from FICO. 
on the backside for this Waterloo roster. And now tie things up 2v2, and they're on the offensive side. Let's see if they can make something happen. Most definitely have to at this stage in the game now, knowing that things are really starting to line up. You have to find yourself a plant still, and knowing the bomb is over towards the middle of the map. I don't know if New Haven has too much of an idea that it's standing there because of how small it is. It's not like on another game where they sit there and let you know, oh, the bomb is massive. You're going to make these plays or any other kind of tax shooter. This is Call of Duty, for gosh sakes. That thing's about the size of a Lunchable, and you're going to have to really peel your eyes out to make sure you can go ahead and pick it up. And that's what Waterloo has to do right now. They have to make that movement across the map. They have to make sure there's an objective to play around. They just can't really do that yet because FICO's down the last player standing as Burke gets picked off and he's got to run a mile and a half not only to get the bomb up but to find these kills as well and he can't even manage that yeah definitely not going to be happening I mean the defense finally going to be answering for this New Haven roster and that's what it's going to be all about is winning these defensive rounds it's going to be all about who wins who wins the most of them I mean really because I mean the offensive side is kind of it kind of feels like a given almost right now. It kind of feels like, you know, you should be winning those offenses. So if you could steal away these defenses right here, it's going to be huge. And off the back to BPR's big two-piece in the mid to kick things off. I mean, this is exactly what you want to see coming out of this New Haven roster. Yeah, I mean, even then on the defensive side, as you mentioned, this map is most definitely attack sided. I mean, it's very attack heavy. And you're going to see a lot of pressure being brought. And that's where New Haven's going to excel. They're going to really just put accelerants under their defense. They're going to find themselves more cushion rounds. They're going to create the space for themselves to say, we can run away with something like this so long as we can just grab these defensive rounds, make sure the attacks can be guaranteed for us, knowing how well they found these shots. But FICO already with a great little first pick there through the middle, going ahead picking off that control and knowing that he now has full control of that. He just slips down towards courtyard, make sure nobody can push on to A, and if anything does come out, just throw that little bit of a, either tactical or an lethal down to find something. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, now with Carnage dropping early, they're going to need an answer. And that's exactly what Zinn's going to be able to provide. 3v3 situation right now. We got all these players spread out at the 50 yard line. But guess what? Shadow is going to be pushing in, making some waves happen. And that is going to be Bork getting the trade out. Zinn picks up another 2v1 scenario now as Bork is going to be the lone man standing. Going to need to find BPR and Zinn. But that bomb's going to be going down to B. They're going to be pushing out the backside. And now, I mean, they're kind of going to be sandwiching Bork right here. Let's see if Bork's going to be able to make a play. He did spot one. Player did drop down. So now he's going to be looking for him. He's going to be on the hunt. Will Bork be able to sniff this player out? Who is going to be hanging out at the stairs? And oh. no, that's going to be Zen of New Haven in a big, big win. Whew. Three to one advantage right now for this team. Yep, another one of these rounds on their hands. I mean, no one was on the attacking side. It was a little bit iffy there towards the get-go when you knew you lost that first player on, on top of it. But when you look at the, the way the rest of the round panned out, you see the stationary kind of positioning across the map. When you see these players are looking to get over and see that nobody's even playing around the bomb right now. That's the craziest part that I've seen. We haven't seen these speed runs for plants. We haven't seen these players rushing to a site. They're trying to find at least three players down before they even consider that, knowing that they're going to be spread out, as I mentioned, off that first round. So they said, you know what? Whatever it may be, we can find ourselves a easy first couple picks, especially if you're old FICO there. We saw it in the last one. That was a really good stationary pick, especially in the middle of the map, holding that control towards top church, making sure you have an entire Oracle lens view, entire map, and Spooky is able to follow up and find another one right now as they just have to find themselves three more to at least make this a 2-3 game. And now that they've got that pick over at the A side, I mean, they're definitely going to be making a play over here, but guess who's over here is going to be BPR. He's been coming up huge on the defensive side for this New Haven roster. Can he do it again? Is right now Spooky's going to be turning the corner, and Spooky's able to take him out. And that's going to be a huge pick coming in from Spooky. Is they're going to be making it a four to two advantage? This should be an offensive round coming in for Waterloo. Is now they make it a four v one. Most definitely should. And this is the round that they needed, man. I mean, this is one of the stages where we say a 2-3 could be a swing round, but 1-3 is just nearly as important, especially knowing you get yourself to not being in a three-round gap on the board thus far. So, I mean, Waterloo, winning a round they needed to, winning a round they had to, and more importantly, set themselves up for what could be some relative success if they just keep it going now. I mean, right here, right now, 3-2. to two. Doesn't get any closer to this. The yep. thing is that this squad, they're going to need to win a defense at some point. Will it be this one? I mean, we just got to wait and find out. I mean, they're going to need they're going to need to pick it up early. I mean, I don't think that they want to get in a situation where, you know, they're looking at a five to what would it be? It would be five to, to three at that time if they were to keep on trading rounds. Yeah. I mean, that's just not going to be a situation you want to go in where you got to win three rounds in a row against this squad. So you definitely need to pick up this defensive round, in my opinion, right now. 
Yeah, and it all comes down to like the plays across the map. We know that Spooky's going to be holding dirt towards A long, looking for that pick on the sniper, but it's just not going to come out. Instead, FICO actually getting that first pick onto the board with the Automaton once again on this defensive round. So the second time now in a row, being on the defense, able to find the first initial pick. But Waterloo in that last time wasn't able to capitalize on that, wasn't able to make the plays. And they know that players are towards A long, but Spooky had no idea where oh. they were coming from. He never saw Zen. He didn't make the impact, but instead, BPR should be the first one to make a pick or at least get a sight line of a player. But not even notice it. Instead, Zen's there for the backup, says, this is where they're coming from. Make the plays, get the kills, and there it is, at least one more into the board. Yeah, big kill from BPR gonna be coming through. Zen gonna be locking things down over day long as well. Spooky trying to get some help to take out this player, but none is gonna be coming through, and that's gonna be New Haven going up four to two. And now, I mean, listen, Waterloo, your backs are starting to become against the wall. You've got to string together a couple rounds in a row right here, right now, or else this team, I mean, we talked about it. I mean, if they win one of these next two maps, you go into that map for hard point, it's just going to be so, so hard. And that's exactly what New Haven are going to be looking to do is really douse the hopes and dreams of this Waterloo roster right here in map number two. If they go up 2-0, I mean, I don't want to say it's over, but I will say that the chances of Waterloo coming back, I'd, I'd give it about 5%. They're about slim to none because, I mean, we can't get the exact percentage. But, I mean, honestly, if you want to look at times where you have to make a comeback like this, a team could find themselves at least one round before they get snuffed out once more, knowing that this, oh, it's going to be one side or the other that you have an advantage for. So, right now, it all comes down to Stem Zero, who's trying to find that first pick, trying to get aggressive towards spawn and can't really find too much success there. And it all comes down to BPR finding that first blood. And whether he can make the read on the spooky, it's not going to be there. FICO finds one as well. That's a huge standout performance right now, sitting at 2 2. And you just got to get that bomb down. You got to make sure to hold it. And there there it is out of FICO. If he can keep on doing that, get the man the credit he deserves. Woo! And now it all comes down to a 1v1 Zen versus FICO. I mean, Zen's got to get this bomb defused. Only a few seconds remaining right now. He's got to win the 1v, but he understands where he's at. You got to go now because you got to get back to the bomb as well. Got to go around the corner. He's able to take him out, but he's going to get back. Oh, no, he's not going to get there. Oh, man. That was so, so close. 10 and 2, though, for Zen to start things off. Waterloo winning a big round right there. Oh my goodness, my blood was pumping. I knew he had to get back to the bomb. That's why I was thinking if you just stay behind the truck, you're probably going to be able to burn enough time. Yep. That's exactly what that player did. Oh man, I thought Zen had that one. <laughs> Even then, it was about two milliseconds before we actually saw that kind of get over the threshold. So I was a little concerned, thinking that he almost maybe had enough time. Yeah. But I was kind of leaning towards that side of the spectrum. But even then, I mean, I'm okay with whatever it really pans out to. Because as it stands thus far, we're still having ourselves a game on our hands. We're having a yep. map to work with, regardless. I mean, Waterloo isn't finding that definitive win they need by any chance. But if they can find a comeback, if they can snuff out a lead by New Haven at the last possible second oh. and rob it away from them and rob the life of Zen right on the get-go, the 10 and 2 player who's now 10 and 3. Ooh. That's a massive pick for these guys. Oh, they are wiping the floor with them right now in this defensive round. Waterloo came alive. What did I say? You got to win two rounds in a row. And they just did it, tying this thing up four to four, not going down to five to three. And that is going to be massive for this squad. They needed that round, and it was win one for sure. And now, I mean, this one's anyone's game. I mean, here we go. Now, yep. Waterloo are on the offensive side. Let's see if they can turn things around. And I'm thinking it more comes down to the the real adjustments we're going to have to see out of New Haven now. That was almost one of the fastest rounds, I think, in the Tuscan Search and Destroy within weeks of CCL, if not the entire season. I'm sure it'd definitely be at least with one of these top ten. Knowing how we just saw them get picked off immediately. Zim was the Especially first player the off the board. And knowing side how winning the round. Is. Especially with the defensive side winning the round. You're 100% you're yeah. right. That was a lightning fast round. I, I highly doubt there's been one that quick for the defense coming out. And already two kills going to be coming in for this New Haven roster. As they said, you know what? You can do it on defense. We can do it too. Is Now it's going to be Stim Zero left in the 1v3. They're going to be hunting him down in the back of the map. Five to four advantage coming in for New Haven. And I mean, listen, Waterloo just had a bunch of momentum, but New Haven doused that out immediately is now New Haven are going to be going back on the offense, looking to close this thing out. I think even then, both these teams are trying to just prove a point right now and completely negate the point you made earlier of this looking like an attack side of map. Two rounds back to back on the defense in a very, very aggressive manner, showing a lot of success and almost extremely quick success to back it up. It's looking really good for both these squads on both sides of the field. We saw a little bit of flex towards the attack side, but we see these teams don't really want to go for the bomb too much. Instead, they want to play for these picks. That's really starting to bite them in the rear now because they don't have an objective to play around. They don't have a central point of focus. And even then, we may not have a central player on right now. Spooky's already going to hang, be picked off. Yeah, right now, New Haven are going to be looking to close things out. Bork is going to be able to get a trade to answer that on BPR. And 
Now, we got to see exactly what Zen's going to be wanting to do. Are they going to be putting this bomb down or pushing out the back? And that's going to be Fico winning a big 1v1. Is this trade going to be able to come through? Is Zen going to be able to win this one? you got to be able to get this trade right here, right now. You've got to, but he gets stunned as well. Zen ends up getting traded out by Bork, and now it's going to be Carnage left in the 1v2 scenario. He finds Bork, but not able to pick him off with the automaton from range. And now we got to see exactly what Carnage is going to need to do. 45 seconds left. Bomb is going to be down. On the opposite side of church. Oh, 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 man. This is just rough right here. He's got to go through church. It's really his only play, in my opinion. Looks like that's exactly what he's going to do. He's going to be going down here. And if he's going to be able to maneuver his way perfectly through these enemy lines, I mean, he might be able to get a pick right here. And he's going to be able to grab the bomb, get out scot-free. And I think he's going to be able to get the bomb down. This was the perfect route, like I said, going through church. And now, I mean, he might be able to win this round if he can plant it for top mid. I mean, nobody's watching A. This is perfect. Nobody. It, yeah, I mean, Stim oh, Zero was the one guy that could have been there, and he finally shows his head, picks things up like a grand or like a prairie dog, and can manage that kill under the board to make ourselves in, in a he, round eleven situation. Now, that's the most important there, thing. Though, like, why didn't he just plant it for for up that's top mid? That's what I was mid. thinking, dude. That You've got to plant for up top mid, like ah. Uh... That is so rough, but I mean, it's a gamble. It's a 50-50. Obviously, a player could have been up top mid watching in the bomb, so maybe that's what he thought, but we got ourselves a 5-5, Mick. Yep. And I think that's the most important thing right now. As I mentioned it earlier, that if Waterloo could turn things around, not only find themselves a win, but a win now when it's not going to be in the dominant fashion. I know that they just barely robbed it away from New Haven's hands. They're going to be questioning themselves. They're going to figure out, try to know what's going on. But as they go ahead and figure out that at least BPR is towards that middle area, and he's sweeping things around, at least trying to find a double, but he can't find it. But a huge trade comes out for Waterloo, and it's now a 1v3 situation within an instant. Even then, you can already hear it. When it comes oh, down to man. Rome, me, neither one of you didn't have much to say there because it all just comes down to the silence now. Whether or not Zen can really clutch this thing up. The man who's 14 and 4. <laughs> if anybody can do it, it's definitely going to be him. Yeah, I mean, right now, 14 and 4. I mean, silence is the only thing that this man wants. He's got to clutch up a 1v3. Got to focus right now. 14 and 4. Zen's been doing it all for this New Haven roster, but you got to do the impossible right here. 1v3 clutch. Able to make it a 1v2. Mm -hmm. Now it's very doable. Plenty of time left mm -hmm. in this situation. I believe he understands exactly where this player's at. And, I mean, if he can make this read, if he can do this right, then he's going to be good to go. But, no, that's going to be Waterloo answering back, making the comeback, able to pick up the 5-5 win. My goodness, Waterloo are showing some resolve. Yeah, they most definitely are, and that's all it comes down to. they got to make sure to have that resilience. They have to make sure to stay in the fight, and even then – we didn't see the dominant performance I was expecting out of them. We didn't see every single player light up and just do what they need to do. But Waterloo, they were all holding with at least some respected kills to each other. Spooky didn't have the best performance there, but you had the rest of the three step up. And honestly, we can tell at the end of the day, three players having a good performance is a heck of a lot better than just one. Because New Haven yeah. Chargers, Zen on that roster, Guy was absolutely caring for the first couple rounds, at least what I saw. During those first three successful rounds we saw from New Haven specifically was off the back of that man. But once you realize that we get him off the board, especially if he's the first pick onto the board that goes ahead and just drops out of this game, this round, it makes our job that much more easy if we're Waterloo. And we say we have no scary boogeyman to run around anymore to really go ahead and hide from like it's a horror movie. We can just charge up right up and find ourselves the necessary kills because they're not going to be ready for us. You know what I'm looking at is 11 minutes and 28. To, like, that's it. 11, 28. That was a 6-5, yep. 11, 20. Yep. Every round lasted an average of one minute. That's it. These were not going very, very long. These players were getting right to it. I mean, hey, that's going to bode well for both of these rosters because guess what? We're going to be heading into Tuscan control where you really can have no fear whatsoever. I mean, Mick, listen, this is this is exactly what we're looking for in the last chance qualifier. Yep. We want to see these teams fight back. We want to see them have some answers. We want to see them, you know, be able to make some adjustments. And now we will get to see exactly who's going to be able to take the advantage in this control. So listen, ladies and gentlemen, we will be taking a very short break. When we come back, we will be hopping right into that control to see exactly who's going to be taking this series advantage. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the CCL. We are here. We've got a one-to-one -one series. Win or go home, your season is over if you lose this match right here. And that's going to be some big plays coming out in this control early and often. This is going to be New Haven getting some early kills out.
And to be expected as well, we even sat there kind of preluded to this, looking at New Haven, kind of expecting them as somewhat of the victors, at least on my end, as you've kind of had a counterpoint to that. But look at the game thus far. New Haven looking outstanding, at least in terms of the kills department. Not too much control on the map just yet in terms of these sites, as we know the ticks are now really what determine the overall standing when it comes around to that overtime. But as it stands right now, it's not even really going to be a consideration. One pip on the board towards that B site. Seven kills of advantage for the likes of New Haven. Waterloo need to make sure they got to get out of the spawn because it's looking like a very uh -oh. difficult task right now with Shadow, or Carnage, excuse me, locking them down. Like right now, I mean, they're getting progression on both points. They've yeah. got a 10 kill advantage. I mean, this is uh, literally as perfect of an opening as you can get. You've already got two and a half ticks of progression over a B. You're about to complete B right now. Looks like the only player in Bork is going to be the only one that could stop B. And no, he's going to get dropped as well. So B's going to be going over. Now all you got to do is capture the easiest point pretty much in all of control right now. I mean, listen, we got to wait and see how things happen uh, when Berlin's added. But, you know, that's a whole nother topic. Won't have to worry about that for this week. Yeah, it was definitely one of us more of a playoff situation, but even then it also comes down to whether or not we can see a bounce back because, I mean, sure, the match isn't over just yet, but, I mean, two ticks of progress is definitely getting there considering that Waterloo only have eight lives remaining. New Haven Chargers, we talked about how hard attack is on the side of the map, but I talked about their aggression on so much a consistent basis that they literally close things out midpoint knowing that they're going to have themselves a definitive lead here, getting themselves the attacking round on the board. Uh, you mentioned attack looking good for search and destroy, at least as the advantage on the side of search. But now, in a control, it may be the same exact thing with New Haven on the board. Yeah, I mean, right now it looks like they have woken up the beast, and now I want to see exactly what what uh, what this roster in New Haven are going to be able to do. You know, now you know on the other side, you know, on the defense, what is this roster going to be able to do right here, right now? I mean, FICO going to be trying to open things up. Looks like it is going to be a B hit coming out. Shadow is going to get traded out, and so these players of the University of Waterloo are going to be pushing on to this B point. But I mean, honestly, the pinch from New Haven definitely going to be coming in very, very quickly, and that's going to be them all getting wiped out. None of those ticks of progression are going to be coming through. And now, I mean, I mean, Waterloo just, at the end of the day, that's going to be wasted time. Yeah, it most definitely will. I mean, they got to make sure to have these rotations, have a warrant behind it, have a reason why they're really putting themselves on the map and why they're putting themselves in certain situations. But it's not even really going to matter too much. So life differential is still kind of evened out. They have plenty of time to work with, so long as they just kind of choose one game or the other, site control or kills. They haven't found too many of either just yet. It's now the first ticket progression does go down towards an A site. But look at how the map placement's going. We're seeing a split. We're seeing some presence towards B as even then Burke is over on that side picking up B right now. It's a good split form. It's a good alleviation of attention right now. But is it going to be enough for them to really go ahead and grab the entirety of one side or the other with this two life lead on their hands? Yeah, I mean, they are able to get at least, at least a little bit of momentum going right here. I mean, they've gotten two at A. I mean, they're halfway to this one at B, Fico. <laughs> Just gonna go ahead and stare at the sky. That's a first. I have not seen a player do that oh all season. God. That is funny. He just said, you know what? I'm gonna just look at it while it comes takes me out. Might as well die with a view, but it is what it is. You find yourself taking progress <laughs> towards B side as well. And I'm not too sure about this, uh, the kind of the plays that we saw out of Waterloo. They look to stack on this B side. They want to cash in on it. They're almost taking a note at a New Haven's book, just a little bit slower to the tick there. I mean, and even then, the control and the contention oh. comes down. And literally, with a millisecond left on the board, we see Waterloo not really going ahead and managing the entirety of it. But still, two That's ticks huge. of progress overall, not just on one side or the other. It comes down to just making sure to get one right now with 30 seconds remaining. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I mean, the New Haven Chargers, if they can play just solid defense from here on out, they might be able to just lock it down. It looks like A is going to be heading over, so that extra minute is going to be coming in, and now it's going to need to be a massive hold. But you know what? It's The time doesn't matter. Look at the kills. Like, these teams are playing yeah. so, so quick. It's only going to be three pushes left right now out of this roster, and... It's all going to be coming down to this. I mean, right now you can see New Haven Chargers. They are set up perfectly. They have a great situation right now they've just got to be able to win these slays let's see what their gunny is made of i mean jay saint in the chat saying the gunny's a little bit shaky oh. but that's gonna be bpr coming in clutch 11 and 6 right now on a three spree shadows on a five spree zins on a four oh excuse me that's oh, excuse me my goodness wrong stat line this card is gonna be on a three spree 13 and 6 coming out right now for this new haven roster i mean they've done a great job getting that two kill advantage right now locking down this B point, and here comes Waterloo as they're finally able to flood in, get some momentum, and that's exactly what they need. But look at the wipe. Oh, my goodness. Zen, PPR, Carnage, and oh, absolutely demoralizing this roster of Waterloo. And now this is going to be the last push coming in. I think that the Chargers have held on strong. 
Yeah, they most definitely have. And even in the reset, where we see these new Heaven players, they're not just stacking on site. They're trying to set up these roadblocks. They want to make sure the time can dwindle down as much as possible to where even if they do find these kills, it comes down to a 1vx situation. If you find all the necessary kills, but still have the game going on. But Spooky going all the way, wrapping around towards spawn, not finding too much relative success there. We see the picks. We see the time stop. It all comes down. That's the last hole. And right here, right now, I mean, that's just not going to be enough. The New Haven Chargers... Hang on, and I mean, that is impressive right there. I mean, yeah. I will say that this roster in Waterloo, they had a perfect start. I mean, they had two ticks of regression on both points. We're able to capture A. They just need to get a little bit, you know, a little bit more kill heavy over at B, and they just weren't able to make it happen. So I don't know. Maybe right now, New Haven, they're feeling pretty good in this situation. And the other thing that we talked about is Waterloo. I mean, they have the better overall record in control. So. The fact that the Chargers are currently up 2-0 in control, I mean, that just that, that, that's going to be mountains. That's going to be massive for this New Haven roster. Yeah, and even then, before the game, keep in mind, you mentioned, this is last chance qualifiers, baby. Records are out the window. We can check the head-to-head. Yeah. -head. We can see what's going on. But even then, I mean, heads, they heal. They develop. They, there's a lot more that comes around to it. So, honestly, it all comes down to whether or not we can see players show up today, and that's exactly what we're seeing on New Haven. They are stepping up. They are looking outstanding. And even then, sure, Search and Destroy wasn't really their place to excel right now. But, I mean, they're making sure to bounce back in a massive fashion, already able to capitalize onto a tick on this A side. You got Shadow pushing up Church just running the entire map looking to get some control on spawns once again this man's trying to literally do it all yeah, and doing it all he might shadow whoo finally does get taken out by spooky but either way i mean a is going to be heading all over the side of new haven and a player in fico is going to be behind right here is able to pick up one that was a nice pick and uh, just got to keep on playing for these extra kills is what Waterloo need to do. You don't want to go down in kills right now when you got a team like New Haven. They're going to be pressing the issue right now. That's exactly what the type of plays that this roster in Waterloo needed coming out of Sim Zero, being able to pick up two right there. I mean, now it's just going to be all about the whole 20 to 20 lives remaining. It most simply will be. I mean, looking at the stance and the lives, as you mentioned, it's 20 to 19 or now make it a one point differential no matter what. It's a better way to put it. It all comes down to the time. It all comes down to control of the side of whether or not we can see New Haven trying to put it on there. And Shadow's trying to tease out. I love the way the guy's playing the game. He's not going ahead and making sure, you know what, it doesn't matter what's happening on the board. I make sure to get the site down. He keeps on playing for spawns. He always has that uppermost objective in his mind. He has the hierarchy system. And the top of everything is to make sure that Waterloo can't play the game. And we see New Haven doing such a great job at it. Sure, it takes him a while to get that strangle, that chokehold into place. But, I mean, all the struggle in the meantime, then trying to get in that spot, they keep a really good fight up for themselves uh, precisely and now 14 to 14 game they're gonna be looking to press the issue i mean one minute left to push this b point i mean i'm not sure man this one could really go either way it's really just going to come down to this break right here and the execution of it is shadow is going to start to get on the point but spooky's able to pick up two and that's going to be big he is eventually going to get dropped zen's going to get dropped as well the defense of waterloo hanging on tight carnage picks up a massive kill up top you know can you win this one no does get taken out by bork now i mean this game is going back and forth ladies and gentlemen it's very very even right now it's going to be coming down to this final push new haven have the slight kill advantage Two in their favor, and they finally got onto this B point. One tick of one tick of progression is going to be coming through, and I mean these final sets of slays, this final push right now, this final defensive hold of Waterloo is going to need to be massive. It's going to need to be huge. This could be potentially, potentially putting them on series point if they do get taken out. But look at this, Waterloo answering back. Five to five lives remaining, but Zen's still going to be on the point. That's going to be the second tick of progression coming through. Zen's going to be able to win the big 1v1. Now it's only one life remaining for the side of Waterloo. Each player going to get one. Dropping down to two left. Are New Haven going to be able to do it? Looks like they are. Only need to take out one more player, and that's going to be doing mm. it as New Haven Chargers 3-0 sweep Waterloo in the control to take a commanding 2-1 series lead. Yeah, commanding is the smallest way to put it, quite honestly. Looking at the way they played this game on control more specifically, they had an outstanding showing on this offense. I mean, on so many different occasions. Just showing that not only they could frag, but even then they could take control of the entire map. I mean, I say that a lot. And I mean, I sit there and mention, obviously, the A, the B site, and we see what teams are doing now. But when you look at every single time, you had a player trying to push up for spawns. We haven't seen that much in the Vanguard season, honestly. We saw all of it in Cold War on so many different occasions where players are like, let's just make them not play the game. 
plenty of occasions where we see teams not able to even move out of spawn to where it looks like they're just hacking somehow and it's just absurdity. But instead, right here, we see New Haven trying to bring in something new to the game, trying to make sure to reinforce every single aspect, get themselves heated up, get themselves warmed up, because in playoffs, they know they're going to be facing that kind of brute force once again. Yeah, one game at a time, one map at a time. That's all that ma that's all that matters because I mean, we said it. Even though Waterloo had the overall better record in control, toss it out the window. This is the last chance qualifier, win or go home, doesn't matter. And I mean, New Haven, they are showing exactly why it doesn't matter, getting a dominant control victory right there. And listen, Mick, I got to be honest, right now New Haven, they've got to be feeling in the driver's seat right now heading into this map number 4. Which yep. we know is hard point, which we know Waterloo have been struggling with. Yep, yep, yep. And I, I just, I don't know what I can say at this stage in the game. I mean, looking at how New Heaven's played thus far, they played an outstanding game on such a consistent basis. Sure, you can look at the scoreboard, say 2-1, but honestly, that one game that we saw Waterloo get was around 11 search and destroy. 2v1 situation. It could have been anybody's game, but no one yeah. has still now what it's looking like. Going right back around the hard point, you're going to see it on this map count right here. New Haven doesn't play around the hard point. That's the biggest problem. And no they don't play around mode, a respawn, apparently. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, yeah, no matter what it may be, just controlling a site, when it comes around to site-based things, when they're just kind of laid out for you, there's no prerequisite to putting a bomb down or whatever it may be. You say, okay, we can just run there and it's already set up for us and the time just ticks itself up where we don't have to press the X button except the reload is not going to be much of a problem. So, I mean, so long as they just keep on playing the game, do what they've done best and just have that element of consistency, which I think after a dominant performance like that, they're obviously fragging. They're obviously grabbing points. If you put those two things together with unlimited respawns, I think hard points looking good for them. And now it is time for our last little little bit of beef in this sandwich, as you did say that we did have of Berlin and Tuscan. The final little bit of Tuscan that we are going to have in this series. And I mean, right now, Waterloo definitely going to be looking to push it to that fifth and final fabled map. And honestly, I'm not going to be mad if we go there. I just don't yeah. feel like it's probably going to happen just based off what we've seen this team in New Haven do so far in Respawn. I mean, right here, right now, I want to see Shadow go big. I want to see some big-time plays. Yeah, I mean, New Haven's looking more like a, sm a snowball or a boulder of some sort, just getting faster and faster as they roll down the hill, and even then, as they roll themselves down the middle of the map, just finding kills and successive kills on every single angle, towards the middle, back into spawn, no matter where you may be, they're making the pressure really, really present, and even then, making it very hard to answer back from. But Waterloo's still picking up a little bit of time on the board and still continuing as well. New Haven may be winning in kills, but that doesn't translate to time as it seems right now. Yeah, and the big thing about Hardpoint is anytime you are able to get some solid amounts of kills, you know, in succession, two, three down, you got to be able to turn that into hill time. If you're not yep. able to and just, you know, just try to go for map control, things like that, just end up getting slayed out regardless, and then you don't even get any points on the board. I mean, it's definitely not going to be the route you want to take, but I mean, looking at this one right here right now, it does look like we are going to be having a pretty close game heading into this second hill right now, which you pretty much would expect. So, I mean, really in a hard point, We've always really seen this in the CCL. It seems like the game is really won on the second set of rotations. That's when the team really starts to separate themselves from the other team. And the first set of rotations is really about all about setting the pace for the game in general. Yeah, and even then, I mean, looking at the game thus far, we see the rotation, we see the second side now coming on into the board. And I mean, this is where New Haven's going to have to turn things around. They're going to have to hold the majority of this, and they've already gone ahead and done a pretty good job at that, making themselves they can tie up this at least to some extent. But this is where we see Waterloo able to go ahead and say, look, things are not going to pan out like this. We can't let this league strip away from us, even then it's only a two-point differential right now, and it's going to have to stay close like this, and we're going to have to rob it at the end as we saw them do in Search and Destroy. That's going to be their point in the game, in the entire series on so many different occasions, is having that relevant because either New Haven's going to win by a long shot or they're not going to win at all. That is if New Waterloo can step up and know when these important moments are going to happen. So right there, already set up towards the back, getting ready for P3. is going to be Burke with a good shot. They're already making sure spots are set up for them. And with only two seconds remaining before this transfer, it's now on the board. Stems in the back, automaton ready. This is going to be a pretty good angle for them. Yeah, I mean, Waterloo, you know, they're set up perfectly right now. And it's going to be all about how they're going to be able to hold down this Fountain Hill and I mean, right now in the back, I mean, nobody's going to be able to push through right now for this roster in New Haven. They're doing a great job, but oh man, BPR is able to pick up two and get on the fountain. Oh man, Zen takes out Spooky. And just like that, this New Haven roster oh. turns things around, but a big two piece coming in from FICO, coming in from the side, being able to shoot right through the temples of those players. But New Haven answering right back as Carnage is on the point now. Going to be locking down this fountain alongside BPR and this team in New Haven. 
I mean, they just answered right back extremely quick, and now we got ourselves a tie game. Yeah, and even then we sat there and saw for a second that, I mean, there was no real answer. There was no follow-up. We saw the push on the site. We saw those kills come through. The double just being in massive couple picks to back things up, but that's where you take control spawns. You got to make sure to capitalize on that, and we just didn't see it out of Waterloo. It's split-second decisions that are just really being lackluster right now because they're making sure to tie themselves in terms of points. They're keeping the kills fairly even across the board. Spooky not really stepping up thus far, but, I mean, the longer this game goes, the more time you're giving him to wake up. So we're not seeing that too much just yet. Instead, it's FICA who's just outstanding thus far, but needs to make sure to have that impact on site as the rest of the team is already set up there for a little bit more time. I mean, right now, the fact that this one is pretty even, I will say, you know, shout out to this Waterloo roster. They have definitely shown that they are able to, you know, at least hang in there. And that's why I said setting the pace. And that's what this Waterloo roster are looking to do is tell New Haven, look, we're going to be able to hang with you. We'll see what happens on the second set of rotations. As I stated, that's usually where a team starts to, you know, make those in-game adjustments and really figure out where they went wrong in the first first set of hills and i mean i want to see if new haven are going to be able to turn things around because now they have themselves the advantage for the first time in this game and as we're heading over toward p5 i mean if new haven can start to stretch this lead out at this p5 which really this is probably one of the most contested hills they shouldn't let this happen but if they can i don't know i mean this second set of rotations we might be seeing a ggs by the end of it yeah, that's a big problem. I mean, considering that Waterloo, they've had some really good shots as far. They've had some really good setup on sites. Knowing that, I mean, prior in that last hardpoint matchup on Berlin, we saw New Haven have what a lead of like 110 to uh, what? It was about 30. It was a huge lead off the get-go until Waterloo decided to really get themselves into high gear. So they decided to make sure that impact in the game is going to come out sooner. But as it stands right now, they're not making sure it's consistent. They're not keeping themselves together. Otherwise, this score could go the exact same way if New Haven just keeps up the momentum they have right now. Able to hold things down perfectly. BPR grabbing so many kills on the board, making sure that he is a force to be reckoned with. And when you have teammates rotating out, Karn just being there on the rear end, saying, okay, give up those 15 seconds. Who cares? We're already setting up for next. Coming on the opposite side of the map. So take it and honestly just bathe in it because we are going to find ourselves more point on the next side. We're going to set up for it. And even then they're setting up roadblocks towards church. Yeah, now they're going to be having a nice, nice, what is that, 45 point advantage right now coming out for New Haven. I mean, they have turned yeah. the hot tides extremely i mean that's exactly what you want to see oh man thought that was going to be a two-piece but no orange does get traded out regardless zen's able to pick up one almost able to take out zero at the top but i mean regardless is this team in new haven that are going to be locking down a big chunk of time spooky's going to be climbing up that's not going to be the best timing and bpr currently sitting at 19 and 3 on a three streak right now is going to be hitting that stun turning the corner taking out fico as well you can see bpr starting to get a little bit confident pressing the issue and now Shadow's going to need to make a play keep, uh, to keep the points going in their favor. Is able to take out one, takes out two before mm. Fico is able to pick up one. But either way, this team in New Haven, I mean, they're up by 80. Yep. That, that's a big problem because that's not only an entire point. That's that's almost a point and a half is what we're looking at now. And Waterloo's going to have to answer back uncontested perfectly to get themselves back to a tie situation. So as it sits right now, knowing that this next site's coming up, knowing that the points are, haven't really been uh, sat on just yet, and Zane grabbing that initial kill, he knows he can clear out this space but has automaton, but the teammates are to trade it out as well because they have the spawns that are just sort of a little hit, hop and a skip away. So knowing that New Haven, they're not going to end the game by any means off this point, but I can say now for a fact that they will hit 200. I mean, looking how they played this game this far, knowing they only need 20 more, they can at least suffice themselves with that. And if they don't, they're going to run away with it in the next one to say, let's just go ahead and close it out right now. But I mean, this is where Waterloo could step things up. If they lock them out, if they make sure they don't hit that 200 threshold, they can hit at least 100 before that. This game looks a lot more doable, but it's still an entire 100 points behind. Yeah, and I mean, it seems like every time you hand it over to me, the lead just gets bigger and bigger. I mean, now it's up to 100 for this New Haven Chargers roster. And I mean, they're definitely starting to snowball this one. You can see the second set of rotations definitely going to pay off in their favor. A couple of players going to be going out trying to get these rotations. BPR is going to be dropping to a nade from Zen. As Zen said, you know what? I'm frying everything in sight. Doesn't matter if you're my teammate. Whatever. Watch out for the nades. You shouldn't have walked there. That's all Zen's going to be saying. Simple as that. Yeah, and as they found themselves a little bit more time for Waterloo, it's just good for them. But, I, I mean, I'm saying their chances are just dwindling more so and more so, especially with that tie bomb coming down from Zen, able to manage two towards the back, knowing those ones will be locked down. FICO does find a very, very good exchange, making things 
and space look a lot more doable, but Carnage on the rear can find another kill. It's a wipe like that that allows New Haven to capitalize on the point point. say, you know what, we just wiped out an entire half of the map. They were spawning out, already trying to get back, but we're just locking them down. They just have to watch that left side. They have to make sure that coming from the fountain that nobody's really going to be locking them up, and that's exactly what's going on. But Waterloo, while they're finding themselves some relativity, they need to make sure to do this consistently for a whole 80 seconds to make this game look that much more doable. I mean, yeah, but right now, I mean, this New Haven roster has doubled their points. They only need 29 remaining, and BPR going to be picking up two big ones right there. And, I mean, those might be the rotational kills to really set this squad up for permanent success. The Stem's going to be trying to come through the bottom of church, making a play happen. But guess what? That is going to be much easier said than done against this roster in the Chargers oh. who are creeping their way closer and closer. Shadow. 31 and 14 over a 2.0 kill death ratio as he's going to be adding insult to injury down here in the bottom of this church is i mean honestly new haven setting up perfectly only 10 seconds remaining this carnage zen going to be taking these players out in succession and now there's going to be the final push coming in from waterloo as this church is going to be locked down nobody's going to be coming in whatsoever not on their watch, and that's going to be the New Haven Chargers advancing to the playoffs, sending Waterloo home. Man, oh man, salute to this New Haven roster. Yeah, you saw right there that Shadow, he was really holding a torch to his name. So the only thing that you can't escape is your own Shadow. And if it's out here to kill you, it's going to be a real big problem. <laughs> you're going to have to bathe in the dark, and uh, that means you're just going to be multiplying it. So looking at the board, looking at what we've seen New Haven do, it was an outstanding game for them once again. I mean, keeping the scoreline almost relatively familiar to what we saw in that first map. It was 107, 121. I mean, about a 20-second differential, and that was a, a more of a testament to uh, Waterloo stepping up early because we saw them have to wake up over the course of the game in that first map. And maybe that's just the jitters, you know, going ahead, getting themselves into the sticks, make sure they didn't really have too much warm up time and feeling themselves a little bit. But I mean, here, it was the same exact thing. New Haven, they were just getting hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. Yeah. And because they had that head start early in the game, because they had that first point in the series and then control to fall things up, they looked out freaking standing here. Yeah. And I mean, anytime that the least, the, the person on your team with the least amount of damage has more. Then the person with the most amount of damage on the other team, you're going to be feeling pretty good. Yep. I mean, I mean, this roster in New Haven, they were slaying out. The gunnies were there. You see, you know, you got two players dropping over 3,000 damage. And Zen and Shadow just putting on an absolute clinic. I mean, Shadow, though, got to be the hard carry. 25 non-traded kills, 32 and 15, over double positive. Just definitely an incredible performance to be able to put this roster in Waterloo down. And move on to the playoffs, man. Big shout out to them. They're going to be moving into Group H. I mean, listen, Group H is going to be a tough one. But listen, they've got to make some plays happen the same way they were able to make some plays happen today. And I think they're going to be feeling pretty good being able to carry this momentum into the playoffs. Yeah, I definitely agree. I mean, New Haven, they're looking strong. But, I mean, we got to sit there and consider the kind of teams that are going to be going up against in playoffs. I'm going to go ahead and give them a little bit of a rude awakening that, look, you won this game today, but this is a small step for your for your team you are going to have to have one giant leap for your entire program if you're really going to find yourself in the shoes to be facing off against these guys in playoffs and it's going to be a very very tough week for these players they're going to have to be scrimming their lives off they're going to have to make sure that sure it's a finals week it's going to be a very difficult situation for them you're going to need to make sure to step up and show that sure we can bounce school we can bounce play but at the end of the day we're going to hit the paint harder than anybody else. And they definitely had the potential to do that. Look at what they've done. Look at how much of a spotlight we saw all these players do. Zen on that search and destroy looking so good. Shadow and Carnage specifically when it comes around to control and Hardpoint. They all showed they had a lot of potential. But I only mentioned three players. You got to make sure all four are attending that game. You got to make sure all four are able to have that same level of consistency as a lot of these other teams. So, I mean, while we didn't see the entire spotlight of what the squad can do, we need to see a lot more of it coming in here in these next couple of weeks. Because even then, that search and destroy to be able to give that up against Waterloo, considering that how the game looked, I had a lot of critiques to make on it. But that's not my job to be making here, especially considering that we're celebrating their victory. Oh, I mean, precisely. And I mean, that's why, you know, big shout out to this team, you know, yeah. in the New Haven Chargers to be able to come out and put on a performance like this when it mattered the most. I mean, the fact that they won that control in such dominating fashion, even though they weren't the favorite control team. I mean, that just shows the type of resolve, the type of mentality that this team has overall. Man, this was an incredible series, though. I will say, man, Waterloo, they fought back, man. That search and destroy. Yeah. They definitely gave us an entertaining one for sure. Let's go ahead and take a look at the recap of the maps. 
We didn't see it go to that final piece of bread in this Berlin Tuscan sandwich. But regardless, we got to see all three Tuscans. And I got to say, I mean, it's just the respawn coming in for New Haven. Looking so, so strong. Yeah, I mean, as I mentioned earlier, 107 on the hard point, going over to 121, they looked outstanding. Problem is, I mean, their frags were just the best thing I could have seen out of these teams. When you saw a player stepping up, when you saw constant pressure, and even in the control, locking down those spawns, that was huge on the attacking side. And even then, throwing in the curveball, hitting B side immediately, grabbing the entirety of it, able to go ahead and lock down the teams where they're saying, we can't push B anymore. We have to give that to them. We're losing way too many lives off that. It's a little bit of a wake-up moment for Waterloo. But, I mean, if anybody goes back and watches this game, it's going to be a pretty easy adjustment to be made for any other squad going up against New Haven. So, they're going to have to find a new element of surprise coming next week. But I'm looking forward to see what it could possibly be. Precisely. And, listen, I'm going to be so, so excited for that situation. Listen, we are not going to be done here tonight, though, ladies and gentlemen. Uh -huh. This was just our first match of the night. We are going to be right back it looks like this time we're going to be having Georgia Southern University going up against Lebanon Valley College. That is who ended up winning, and that is going to be a straight-up Group A playoff match, ladies and gentlemen. So you guys aren't going to want to go anywhere. We're going to be right back after this short break, so get your popcorn. Stay tuned.